tightening down the bolts on this LB7 Duramax engine and it has ARP head studs and head bolts. The washers, head bolts and head studs are in and they've been lubricated as well on the washers, on the threads, on both sides of the threads and the studs, they were put in with lubricant on them into the block first before the gasket was put in and then the engine block was put in on top of them. After that, the studs had the washers and the bolts put on. And when the studs were put in, they were put in just snug, not tightened up with a torque wrench, just snug tight until you can tighten them anymore and making sure they are all same level. And no stud has been sticking up and didn't get the threads to go all the way to the depth that they required to have. And now it's the same pattern as the stock head bolts. And the head bolt is now going to be tightened to 125 and start at 40, 80, and 125, going through the sequence that you have to, according to the diagrams, that will show you an even dispersion of torque going on to this head block surface. And then after these head bolts up at the top here, they will be torqued down to 25 foot pounds. You can reuse the stock head bolts. I've done it twice already. And as long as you're tightening them to the proper torque, make sure all your contacts are clean. I put over 100 horsepower on both of the engines and they get driven quite hard. And they have held up perfectly fine over multiple years. This engine, I decided to put head bolts on them. The package from ARP says they're made in California and it was actually missing a washer. It didn't go missing when I was installing it. It was missing in the package. They were one, one washer short. Everything else was there, but one washer was missing. So I had to reuse an old washer, drill it out and make it larger. So it's a, about a thousand dollars at least for that product. But that's the only thing that was missing. It looks like it could create some more increase strength and make this more rigid in this area, having the head studs and the bolts a separate unit. But if you are just not planning on putting a lot of power, bigger turbo injectors and stuff like that, and just a bit of power over stock, then reusing your old head bolts or something that I have done and it works. We'll see how long it lasts, but it should last as long as head studs like this would last. Also, the, what else? When you're redoing head gaskets on the LB7 or any LMM, LML Duramax engine, one of the biggest reasons I could see that the head gaskets would fail, other than the materials that were used on the gaskets, the heat shields on the exhaust manifolds should definitely be removed. That is just retaining heat, shielding the heat to go back in towards the engine. It's really nothing that's going to catch on fire outside of this wheel well area. And the heat that it's going to produce is 
I've had them and it's not going to catch anything on fire so far. So that is definitely something that you'd want to remove on the manifolds and the up pipes to try and increase release of heat and not dispersing that heat and compacting it directly towards your head gasket materials. Regular oil changes when it's getting thick as well, like at least once a year, once a season, depending on how much the truck has been driven, would also be a good idea. These are Japanese engines. It's made by Zuzu. Duramax is, so you're pretty much driving a Japanese vehicle, or well, at least the engine but everything else is probably made in China. So they are very well-built engines. It's very simple to take apart and put back together as well. And to increase the power, a bit over stock, because the stock engine in its stock form does not have much power at all. And you'd wonder why you'd want to drive around. Doing some simple modifications can increase your fuel economy and your power for going around town or towing, which can be very helpful. Also, if the engine has emissions, these air intakes here, it gets the exhaust recirculated and goes back into these air intakes in the manifold. Any vehicle diesel engine with emissions on it. It will go into the manifold and then it'll create this tar substance and coat it entirely. So when that's cleaned out, the throttle response is much crisper and feels a lot better and way more responsive. So if you're rebuilding a and deleting a diesel engine with emissions on it, and you look inside the air intakes like this, if you clean it out as much as possible, the throttle response will definitely be increased as well. What else do we got here? Redoing the engine is so much easier when it's out of the truck and if you're gonna do the head gaskets as well, it's way easier doing it out of the truck. And at that time, it's best to take the whole engine out and reseal all the gaskets, all the oil pan gaskets, clean everything up, your front engine cover and your front rear main seals as well, putting in brand new ones. Then you pretty much have a brand new engine once you put it back into the truck. So that's something that you can definitely think about doing rather than trying to do it in your truck. It's very easy. If you strip it down, you can lift this up with an engine lift without a problem. Replacing the exhaust manifold bolts as well is probably something you might have to do if it has been driven in a winter climate. One of the best modifications for an LMM is just deleting the emissions and putting a straight piped exhaust, five inch exhaust, a some product like a FlowPro, it's very durable metal that it's made of. Other than that, getting a EFI Live tune that has deleted any engine lights that are required to be removed after removing your emissions systems. And also the valve, the engine, the valve covers, they have a vent.
most old diesel engines on big trucks and stuff like that. There's a tube and it goes to the ground. You usually see it puff out smoke or it'll drip out smoke a little bit. These ones, most vehicles, they will go back into the air intake. And so you're sucking in hotter air and oil contaminated air. The best thing to do is have that dripping out the sides of your engines, um, especially on these any Duramax engine. Even gas cars do have that as well. Another thing to do on an LMM and LML is air intake isn't really needed. That's pretty much all you really need to make a big difference in power is having the tune to delete everything. You could add 50 horsepower if you want, if you have bigger tires or something, but stock tune is plenty of power over what it was before with the emissions on it and the stock exhaust system on it. For the LB7, it's got a different turbo. It's a bit smaller turbo and the way the top end of the engine works is a slightly different. The bottom end of the engine is pretty much the exact same. All the engine blocks, what's going on down there, other than some differences in the internal parts. So some upgrades you want to have done on an LB7 is a turbo intake horn, a larger one than the stock one that'll allow much more air to get into the turbo at a higher rate of speed, especially since it's a smaller turbo. Also, the exhaust, either four inch or five inch straight pipe flow pro exhaust or MBRP exhaust, it doesn't last as long, it kind of gets rusty faster than metal. And the same thing as the upper vents that are coming out of the crank, the valve covers here, those can also be vented. Down here at the front of the engine cover, there's also a vent and you can also run that pipe up with these other pipes and just out to the side of the engine. So it's breathing and venting out properly. That's another thing with diesel engines why head gaskets could probably go prematurely as well. Or, I don't even call it premature, but having them go bad from not having proper ventilation inside of the engine. You're allowing it to breathe and it's just running at a much cleaner cleaner rate of your engine oil life instead of that mixing back into your air intake. Another thing is an air intake on the LB7. That's probably recommended. The LMM, it's okay. They're pretty big air intake on those ones. And you can really make a difference on the LB7 engines, especially with the size of the smaller turbo that is on them. And then as well, getting a tune done on it. The EFI Live Tune and 100 horsepower, you put that on the engine, you gotta be responsible when you're driving. It can't be going on it crazy all the time, like it's a race car, but it will increase the power for towing. It'll tow effortlessly and as well as just going around town you will notice a significant difference over stock, whether it's a dually truck or a single wheel truck that will definitely be a very economical and high performance upgrades for your vehicle. So, that's some talks about Duramax engines that I have learned
and just the fuel economy is much better. Great for towing. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down and continue assembling the rest of the parts on this engine.